and make sure I start this off uh, on the right foot. So um, what a special time this is and what a special place Southwestern is for all of us. Um, it's an honor for me to introduce to you a man I've had the privilege of getting to know during my coaching years here at Southwestern um, as a friend. Um, and I consider Ken a friend personally, professionally, and when I think about all those that love and support Southwestern tennis, he's one of the ones that comes to mind. Um, in the citation I'm about to read to you all, you'll hear the successes that Ken has accomplished, but there's a saying that goes, successful people are always looking for opportunities to help others. It is because of his leadership in fulfilling the mission of the United States Tennis Association here in Texas, which is to promote and develop and grow the game a dad in Houston who loved tennis had the opportunity to teach the skills of the game at public parks to his three boys. Those boys developed their tennis skills by participating in local and statewide tournaments. Ken, because of the opportunities, you and those who have come before you helped to create through leading the Texas section of the USTA, those three boys were able to develop their skills to a high level and gain experiences which provided each of those boys the opportunity to attend college and play collegiate athletics. Those three boys continue to play the game as adults, and two of them have made their living from it. Those three boys were myself and my two, old, my two brothers. As you are inducted into Southwestern University's Athletic Hall of Fame today, it's only fitting that a place that means so much to you and me I not only get the honor of reading your citation, but also get the opportunity in front of this group to thank you for your work. And on behalf of my family and the thousands of those who are playing and who have played during your leadership, we thank you for your work. Many like myself are forever grateful for your influence and the advocate you've been for the game of tennis, which have created opportunities for others to experience a life they only dreamed of. I'll ask Ken McAllister to come on up. And as you would join me in congratulating him into his induction into this Hall of Fame. And I will read his citation that will be on his plaque. An accomplished player, coach, and administrator, Ken McAllister has, set stellar, has said, had a stellar career at all levels of the tennis world. A two-time letter winner for the Pirate tennis team, he used his intercollegiate success as a springboard into a tennis career. As a player, McAllister continued to shine on the court after graduation as he went on to earn 35 state rankings in Texas. He also earned five United States Tennis Association rankings and in 1988 won the Professional Tennis Registry's National 45 Singles Championship. His expertise as a player led him into coaching where he coached over 30 state and nationally ranked players at the high school level in addition to winning three Texas high school state championships. McAllister served as president of the Texas Tennis Coaches Association from 1971 to 1974 and was named the Texas Pro of the Year in both 1976 and 1980. The United States Professional Tennis Association named him National Pro of the Year in 1981 and he has held the rank of USPTA Master Professional since 1987. In 2014, he will mark a 24-year tenure as the executive director of USTA Texas, 16 years as the executive director of the Texas Tennis and Education Foundation, and 10 years as the president of the National Park, National Public Parks Tennis Association. He was inducted into the Texas Tennis Coaches Hall of Fame in 2000, the Snyder High School Athletic Hall of Honor in 2011, and the Texas Tennis Hall of Fame in 2013. McAllister graduated from Southwestern in 1964 with a Bachelor of Arts degree. On behalf of Southwestern University Athletics, congratulations on your induction.
That was exhausting. <laughs> um, clearly, uh, in terms of those of us who are fortunate enough to be inducted today, it's age before beauty, and uh, and that's uh, that's nice. Um, as the uh, congratulations to the Hall of Honor folks, it was as as the description of what it took to be in the Hall of Honor was read. When the first one went through, which was a 3.5 GPA, I knew I wasn't eligible for that. <laughs> so, so uh, seeing as uh, what I often share with Dr. Munt, and that is that I graduated from Southwestern in the top 80% of my class. <laughs> because this, uh, uh, the, the audience here, and, and I am one of the older ones, uh, it's nice to be in an audience like that. Um, it, I thought I'd take a slightly different approach to, to responding on this, and it won't take as long as it sounds like it's going to. Uh, but um, uh, I finished, finished here in 1964, which obviously is 50 years ago, and I've been in the industry since then. And I recall that I earned my way through Southwestern, uh, among other things, with Myron Dees teaching me how to how to officiate basketball and picking up a few dollars that way, I waited tables. So like the folks that did this, I did a whole lot of these kinds of events at Southwestern University while, while I was here. So um, I recall doing that, and there were a lot of old people at those events, alums and stuff, and some of them that had graduated in the 19-teens, in the 1920s, and I was thinking, what was the difference between the 1960s and, and then? Well, here I am in 2014. Surely somebody wonders, what was it like in 1964 to graduate here at Southwestern? So, <laughs> a, couple, a couple of items. One, we were all white. Uh, that's not a, a real positive, but it was, the time of the, uh, it was that time. And things changed, thank goodness. Uh, with, with all, but that was, that was the nature of the student body and there were a whole lot of others. But I had transferred here from a school in New Mexico where whites were in the minority. It was kind of, kind of it was well, very interesting as, as you would think. But there were still some, I'm not gonna call them antiquated, but there were some rules about us students back then. Um, uh, I, I know we had one student or more kicked out for a panty raid. I don't know if they still do that <laughs> or even care. I mean, you, you can't find them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said that. I'm just, I, didn't, I didn't mean to say that. Um, <clears throat> but there was another rule about morality at the time, and that was that uh, if, if, of course, we didn't have summer school then either, and if you were caught drinking during the summertime, you would be kicked out of school at Southwestern University, even if you were 21. Those of you that were around then know that that, that was true. I don't, there are rumors that people were kicked out for that. I just didn't know about them or anything uh, at, uh, at the time. Um, I was an English major and uh, uh, I was kind of lucky to graduate, but. English was a tough subject to get a degree in here, at least I, th I thought so. And I can recall my senior year that I was in Dr. Clifford's class. Some of you, many of you remember Dr. Clifford and uh, taking, I think it was Shakespeare, and he a asked the question of what is onomatopoeia or pentameter or something like that, I can't remember which one it was, to me, and I choked. He said, Mr. McAllister, if you think you will get a degree from this institution and not know that, you are sadly mistaken. I, of course, got just enough done to where I got, got through it. My college roommate ended up going to Stanford and getting a PhD in computer science, think 1965 here, 64. My uh, best friends were lawyers, businessmen, uh, bankers, such. And I was a jock. Uh, and and underst understand, what I'm loving about this event is that this has changed a lot. 
here at Southwestern because uh, we jocks were kind of the low class. We were kind of kind of the untouchables for uh, around uh, comparatively, even though we had a great history uh, back in the earlier days of Marvin Henderson Sr. and such who, who, who uh, in, in the great athletic days of Southwestern and everything, but not, not exactly when I was here. Maybe it's because I was one of those people, I don't know. Um, but one thing happened on campus that kind of predicted my future. What was big here, and I don't know if it's still big, and that's intramural athletics. Uh, is it still big? Yeah. It's, it's still fairly important uh, because of the fraternities and, and all. And back then, it was all guys, and all the athletic teams were guys, too. It's before Title IX. And, um, and my senior year, we had some really good athletes on on our independent team, the um, Gamma Delta Iotas. Um, did, did that make any sense to you, GDIs? Okay, okay, it used to get more chuckle than that. Uh, and, and we had some good athletes on the independents because they didn't get recruited or else we were all too poor to pay the fees for being in a fraternity. And so I quarterbacked the football team, which was full pads back then, uh, I uh, brought the ball down on the basketball team that won the whole thing, and I won the singles in tennis, which is the way of making the team team then. So my thinking was, who's going to accept this for the independents? Because we didn't have a fraternity that had leadership to accept the overall trophy for all of the sports and everything. So I came to this building and organized uh, here in this building, the Independent Men's Association, and I became its first president. Uh, my ego was such that, as you heard on my thing, I've been president of a whole lot of other things. I mean, my ego has been built up so much from Southwestern's training of, of getting me to, <laughs> if you, you can become president of something, you just go join it and see, see if you can do that sort of thing. Seriously, we... Uh, our, we had big state conference for tennis at that time. The schools were St. Edwards, St. Mary's, uh, Texas Wesleyan, Texas Lutheran, and us. I played doubles with Johnny Walker from San Antonio, uh, and we got second in conference both years. That was the best, best we did. Uh, among the people we played, and I'm just doing this for history's sake, as a fellow named Julio Rojas, which is a small fellow from Central America uh, who played for St. Edwards. He beat me here on the campus, and so I was determined I was going to beat the guy because he was a little wimpy kid, and he didn't hit the ball as hard as I did or anything, so I practiced and really worked hard to get ready to play him at St. Ed's. And so I got there. I was ready for this match. I won the first two games, and it was the last two games I won. He beat me 6-2-6-0. Turned out he was Central American champion. He had beaten the University of Texas number one player who was in the top five in the country at the time. And he was quite good. And I just didn't understand what good tennis 